video we're going to be learning about pH. So we look at what pH is and you learn the words acidic, alkaline, basic and neutral. You learn to look at pH charts such as this one and pH charts for each pH indicator will be different and how pH is measured. So examples of everyday life that is measured by pH as well and it's surprising how versatile pH is. So pH measurements are important in medicine, biology, chemistry, agriculture, forestry, food science, environmental science, oceanography, civil engineering, chemical engineering, nutrition, water treatment and water purification and many other applications. So that is how widely used pH is. So what is pH and why is it important? pH is the measure of the acidity or basicity of a solution. Now I'm sure that you've heard that something is acidic and you might understand that certain things are acidic but we don't understand the levels of acidity. Some levels are actually okay for us to consume and some levels actually can cause harm. That's the same with being basic. So another word for basicity is alkaline. So if you hear alkaline, up this end is alkaline or basic. So both words mean the same thing. But this is a standard pH chart. So pH is measured on the pH scale which ranges from 0 to 14. At 7 we have distilled water and that means that it is neutral. So a pH reading of 0 to 6 means a substance is acidic. Now if you go more towards 0 it's very acidic and if you go up you know around pH 3 is a medium um, acidic but if you go to pH 6 it's only slightly acidic it's not very very strong acid at all. A pH reading of 8 to 14 means a substance is alkaline so this means it's basic so the more towards 14 you go it's very very strong alkaline solution and the more towards 8 so pH of 8 is only just slightly alkaline. So pH is the measure of hydrogen ions in a solution. Solutions with a high concentration of hydrogen ions have a low pH and solutions with low concentrations of hydrogen ions have a high pH. So going up towards 14, they're lower in hydrogen ion concentrations and more towards zero, they're actually, um, sorry, they're higher in ion concentrations at zero and they're lower at hydrogen ion concentrations at 14. The pH scale is based on a logarithmic scale, meaning that an increase or decrease of an integer value changes the concentration by tenfold. So, for example, between a pH of 3, so a pH of 3 is 10 times more acidic than pH 4. So looking at pH 3, it's 10 times more acidic than pH 4. And a pH of 3 is 100 times more acidic than pH 5. In the same way, a pH of 11 is 10 times more basic than pH 10. So there's actually 10 levels in between each number value. Now, precautions of acids and bases. Acids and bases can actually react with our skin, so it's very important to know what we're using in the lab. Um, Katie Piper is, used to be a face model, um, and she had acid thrown at her face by a man. Now, as a result of that, this is her before the accident and this is Katie after the accident, straight after the accident. You can see that her face has reacted with the acid. So this acid that they used to throw on Katie's face was very strong and it's the same acid that we can use in the laboratory. So it's very important to be careful when using acids and bases. So acids with a low pH of around 1 are very reactive and dangerous for humans. The same is true for bases of a pH near 13 or 14. Chemists use strong acids and bases to get chemical reactions in the lab and to also see the differences between chemicals when measuring pH. So although they can be dangerous, these strong chemicals can also be helpful to us. Strong acids cause severe burns when in contact with your skin and organs. So in Katie's situation, you can see that her face is healing in this photo it still had a reaction and it takes a long time to heal. So strong bases. Now when you get an acid on your skin, you can actually feel the acidity. You can feel it burning through your skin. It's different for a base. So 
So a base, if you get a base on your skin, you do not notice. In fact, if you get it on your fingers, you might be there for a little bit. And then if you move your fingers around, your skin starts to feel slimy and it's turning your skin into soap. That's literally what it's doing. So it doesn't hurt until it gets into the deepest layers of your skin and that's when you'll feel the pain. This is because the basic solution is turning your skin into soap. You feel pain after it has turned your skin into soap. So the precautions of acids and bases, the moral to the story here is take precautions when using acids and bases. Always use gloves and protective gear when using your acids and bases. If you get any chemical on your skin, wash it liberally with water. And let's say, for example, you're using a very strong acid and you have some clothing on. You might have gloves on, but you might accidentally splash it onto your clothing. Take the clothes off and wash your skin with water and do not put those clothes back on because it can actually burn through your skin. And even if you put the clothes back, back on, the acid is still in your clothes. So it is very important to not put those back clothes back on the clothing. Now, this is a pH chart. At pH zero, battery acid is very harmful. At pH one, again, hydrochloric acid is extremely harmful, but we do produce hydrochloric acid in our stomach. Our hydrochloric acid in our stomach is not as harmful to us because we produce it, but it's also a higher pH. It's between pH 1.5 and 3.5, depending on what we're eating. At pH 2, we've got lemon juice and vinegar. Now, lemon juice and vinegar are not harmful for us at all. In fact, we can put it on our salads, we can ingest it. So it's safe for consumption, even though it's, it's quite acidic. We wouldn't consume it in large amounts. Um, there's actually diets that are out at the moment. And if you have a shot of apple cider vinegar, apparently that's meant to help bring your system pH back to normal. So it's very interesting. They do encourage us to have vinegar. pH 3, grapefruit and soft drink are obviously very safe for consumption. At pH 4, we have tomato juice and acid rain. At pH 5, we have black coffee. At pH 6, we have urine. Now, all of these, you can actually see the, the tastes or the flavors of these foods that we do actually consume. They're sort of like a sickly sweet, okay? So that's how we can tell if it's an acidic. Um, pH seven is distilled water. Our blood has a pH of about 7.4, so it's quite neutral and very similar to water. pH eight, there's sea water. pH nine, we use baking soda. pH 10 is milk of magnesia, and this is actually a, mag um, a laxative. pH 11, we have ammonia solution, which is used as a house cleaner. You must be very careful when using this house cleaner if you do use this house cleaner, again, you must waft the, the fume towards you because it can, if you put your nose directly underneath it, it can burn your nose and your throat and damage your lungs. So it is very important. When you do smell chemicals and you don't know um, how toxic they are, waft them towards you and then that will give you an a indication of how strong that is. pH 12 is soapy water. So soap is actually okay for us. We actually use it on our skin and that one's fine. pH 13 is bleach and that's quite harmful. And pH 14 is drain cleaner, which is also harmful again. So these two are the harmful substances because they're at the, the higher alkaline levels. Okay, our food. Most of the food that we actually eat is acidic. So our stomach produces very strong acids anyway, so it does not harm us. This acid helps us digest our food and also kills some microorganisms that may be harmful to us. So if we do ingest food that has some bad microbes on the food, the stomach acid actually kills them before it can go through our system. Acidic foods. Now we have pH of three to four citrus fruits. Vinegar is pH two to four, which is probably one of the more acidic um, substances that we do eat. At pH 3 to 7, we have alcohol, depending on what alcohol you consume. Fruit juice is between 2.5 and 3.5. Cheese is between 5.1 and 5.9. And yogurt is pH of about 4. Jelly is 3. Honey is 3.9 to 6. And what are acids? So acids are substances that have hydrogen ions and a pH lower than 7. The more hydrogen ions, the stronger the acid. 
acids taste sour or sickly sweet. Examples are vinegar, citrus fruits and Coca-Cola. Now bases are the opposite. They have substances that have hydroxide ions and have a pH of greater than 7. The more hydroxide ions, the stronger the base. Bases taste bitter and feel slippery. Soaps are actually basic. So when you use a soap, you know that it's basic because it is slippery. Examples are bleach, ammonia and most cleaning products. So typical alkaline foods, we do still eat some alkaline foods and they include vegetables, especially raw leafy green vegetables. There's fresh herbs and spice, parsley, basil, cilantro, cayenne and ginger. And there's fruits, watermelon, avocado, cucumber, young coconut, wheat grass and sprouts, for example, alfalfa, bean, broccoli, etc. Then there's baked beans, okay? A high fiber, so all of these actually have something in common and they're all high in fiber. And a high fiber diet is vital for a healthy digestive system. Without adequate fiber, your intestine won't get a signal to keep your partially digested moving along the digestive tract. Now, alkaline foods do have a reaction. And one of them is that they actually release gas, so hence this picture. Fiber is also an important food source for health promoting bacteria in the lower intestine. Vegetables and fruit are good sources of fiber but can also be responsible for producing the excess gas. Examples of pH uses at home. Now you might think, oh, where do I use pH at home? If you have a pool, pH is extremely important. So water in your domestic swimming pool can harbor a range of microbes, including bacteria and algae, which can cause health problems such as ear, nose and throat infections. You'll notice if you've been swimming, especially in a communal pool, if you get sick straight after, it's probably from the pool water itself. So you should check your, the pH and chlorine levels daily and these tests should preferably be done before the first swim of the day and this is in a communal pool. In your pool at home you might check it every third day because you know that it's only a few people that are in that pool which might just be your family and your friends. So imbalance of chemicals can cause contaminated waters. The pH level indicates how acidic or alkaline the water is at any given time. A pH level of 7 means that water is neutral. Above 7 means that water is alkaline and below 7 means that the water is acidic. You should aim for a pH level between 7 and 7.6. Now if you've got a pH of 8, it actually means that it can cause some skin reactions on your skin. So above pH of 8 is not good. But also, if it's below pH 7, it can cause eye irritations. So if you've ever been swimming and you do get irritated eyes, it could be from how acidic the water is. Some of the many factors that can affect your pool's pH level include heavy rain, lots of swimmers or people in the water, and pool chemicals. So different chemicals can affect the pH of your water. It is important to regularly check the pool's pH level to, to ensure that the swimmer is safe. Now, the filtration and chlorination is also important within the pool, and this would affect, obviously, the pH of the water. So the water in your pool is pumped through a filter to remove debris and particles. Chlorine is a chemical that disinfects the water and helps remove debris. To assist with maintaining all chemicals and the pH of the pool water, there are pool test strips available. And they might look like this. It shows the alkalinity of the pool, the, how much chlorine is in the pool, and the actual pH of the water. These strips will tell you if your pool is overall balanced. Okay, the summary for today. The pH is the measurement of the alkalinity or acidity of a substance. It is measured on a scale from zero to 14, depending on how acidic or alkaline it is. A pH of 7 is neutral. Some foods are acidic, for example, lemons and citrus fruits. Some foods are alkaline, for example, Brussels sprouts and beans. And we measure the pH if we have a pool at home to determine if it is safe to swim. This concludes looking at pH levels. Mm -hmm.